واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد evil actions of the heart and the tongue we're talking about the third disease which is غض البصر lowering your gaze talking about the evil actions of the hearts and the tongues today we'll continue talking about lowering your gaze Usama Ibn Zayd radiallahu anh said that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said مَا تَرَكْتُ بَعْدِي فِتْنَةً أَضَرُّ عَلَى الرِّجَالِ مِنَ النِّسَاءِ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said I have not left any trial behind me more harmful, more dangerous on men than women. If we can understand this hadith, this is hadith reported by Bukhari and Muslim, we can understand the danger of looking or gazing or uh, just simply uh, having no control or having uh, no conditions for your looks between men and women and vice versa. As they say here, keep your hands to yourself, we say also keep your eyes to yourself. Islamically, you keep your hands and you keep your eyes to yourself. Because if Prophet Muhammad وسلم, tells us that this is the effect, this is the danger that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, left, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, do not get near committing fornication, which means anything that may lead to it, we can understand the danger of not lowering your gaze. And we said before that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded men to do that. And we know when the command is for men, women automatically fall under that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the next ayah, He commanded women individually to lower their gaze and to chase themselves. This is to let them know that it is not only limited to men. Even though there is a great and a vast difference between the look of a man to a woman and the look of a woman to a man, it's still prohibited for both. But it is of a lesser evil from women to men. Because the attraction of women to men is a lot more than the attraction of men, is less than the attraction of men to women. Meaning that women are attracted to a lot more than sexual relationships. A woman can be attracted to the, uh, the way the person looks, the way the person talks, the way the uh, uh, intelligence of the person, the kindness of the person, the behavior of the person, a lot more uh, areas, uh, in other words, there is, uh, there is more, uh, I don't know how to word it, but uh, it is of a lesser evil than men. There is, like you can say, it is not a lusty look like men do. For instance, if you see a woman not dressed properly on the side of the road, you see a lot of men yelling and talking and screaming and looking and everything and may even run off the road. But if you see a man doing that, walking on the road, you don't see women going crazy for that person. This is so natural. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emphasizes that on men. And clear from this hadith, men are not of a danger to women like women of a danger to men. And women tend to exaggerate attracting attraction to themselves than men do. If you were to let men and women mix, men are not going to worry about looking good, presenting themselves like women do. Women, they will go out of line to look so beautiful and so attractive to men. Men don't do that. So usually if a woman starts to break loose in relationships, there is no stopping to her. 
she will go a lot more beyond the minimum and knowing that she's going to do that men are more influenced by any behavior of a woman so a woman as is without exaggerating her beauty without exhibiting her beauty is very attractive to the man you can imagine when they try to tempt and when they try to go out of their life so therefore it is an affirmative decision from the beginning. Do not look. Lower your gaze and we will get to some of those. Ummahatu al-kabair thalath. You have evil actions. And they have core actions. A major action, a horrible action, from it stems all other actions. You have three of those. And they are combined in one ayah. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرٍ وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ Those people who don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is number one mother of actions relating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Associating partners with Him. Showing arrogance. Calling anyone besides Him. Attributing to a sonship, attributing mother, attributing wife, any of those stems from that saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they don't associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one, وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهِ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ They will not kill any living human being unrightfully. This is the right <coughs> of the people, which means... You don't kill, that means you don't hit, you don't kick, you don't slander, you don't harm any human being with anything. They don't commit fornication or adultery. This is the mother of A'rad, A'rad, the honor of the people. Which means, you don't look, you don't touch, you don't mix, you don't do any of that because the mother of all is doing the act of fornication or adultery. Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu reported that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was asked, Su'ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyudhan bi'a'am? He was asked sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which of the sins is the biggest? Qal an taj'ala lillahi niddan wa qad khalaqa. To associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or someone equal to him and he created you. What does that mean? <clears throat> How can you associate someone with him and he did not create you? Allah created you. He is the one who deserves to be alone. He said, then what? He said to kill your son fearing that he will eat with you. What does that mean? Well, before, when they used to have children, we all know that they used to bury the daughters. Well, that's not true. Not only the daughters. They used to bury boys too. But mainly the daughters. Here, they used to do it. Why? Because they fear poverty. If I am having enough food for me and my wife, then I have a child. I worry about, he's going to eat with us. That means there's not going to be enough food for me and for my wife, so I'll go ahead and bury it. This is what they used to do. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses in two ways. One in Surah Al-Isra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ do not kill your children fearing of the future property. Because in the future he's going to grow and he's going to share it. He said, we will provide for you first. And then, in Surah Al-An'am, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَوْلَادَكُمْ مِنْ إِمْلَاكُ I'm sorry, the, the, the first one in Surah Al-Isra, it says, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ We provide for them 
than you. Why? Because the need is not now, it's in the future when they grow up. In Surah Al-An'am, نَحْنُ نَرْزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُ Do not kill your children because of a poverty right now. We will provide for you than them. See the difference? If the poverty is now, you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of you first, not your son, because that's why you're killing him. You want to provide for yourself. In Surah Al-Isra, I'm afraid that in the future, they will feed with me. So the need is not right now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we will provide for them and you in the future. So the point is, killing is for men, for boys and girls. That is what it used to be. So Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, the biggest sin is to associate problems with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to kill your son, fearing that he will share the sustenance with you. So the first one is the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The second one is the right of the people. And the third one, قَالْ ثُمَّ أَيْ قَالْ أَنْ تُزَانِي حَلِيلَةَ جَارِكْ To sleep with the, with the wife of your neighbor. Which is zina. You see, associated partners like the surah, killing zina. Look in that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said when it talks about zina or fornication. يقول الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم لأن يزني الرجل بعشر نسوة أيسر من أن يزني بامرأة جاء For a person to sleep with ten women it is less evil than sleeping with his neighbor. Can you understand why? Because when you talk about relationships, you're talking about taking care of the neighbor. You're talking about trust between the neighbors. You're talking about brotherhood. You're talking about uh, like blood relations. When you talk about your mother, your daughter, your sister, your aunt, these are very close blood relationships. Any evil act with them, it's not like someone else. The punishment is a lot bigger. The act is a lot more devastating. The same thing with that. We'll give you an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Dirham riba ashad عند الله من ست وثلاثين زنية One dollar of usury or riba interest is worse than 36 fornications. Bring a person who had dealt with riba with one dollar and another person committed 36 times fornications. This person with one dollar of riba is more sinful than that person. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the benefit of the community, benefit of the people more than the benefit of the individual. We don't look at the harm here and just limit it to that person. What evil can this do? In fact, one, one uh, person at the time of Imam Malik, rahimahullah, he uh, saw a drunk person trying to hunt the moon. He had a little bit too much. So he looked at him and he said, By Allah, my wife is divorced. If there is any more evil action worse than alcohol, because of what he saw, this person is just going weird, trying to hunt the moon. So what did he do? He said something, that will make his wife divorce if it becomes real. Now Imam Malik was there. He looked, he said, I looked in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I found out that riba is worse than alcohol. So I told him, your wife is divorced. Look how, I mean, you, look, you look at the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and you look at the uh, Quran, and you see how the scholars bring out judgments for uh, things like that, subhanAllah. So here you have three things, and uh, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that 
to confirm this hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that surah that says do not associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or kill a person unrightly and do not commit fornication or adultery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, كل المؤمنين يغضوا من أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم ذلك أزكى لهم. This is what we were talking about last time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to safeguard our privates. And to do that, you lower your gaze. Because looking is like the mailbox of zina. Here is the mailbox of zina. When you reach a level, then you commit zina. Look and look and look and look and what results from that look? You end up with filling up that mailbox. You end up falling into the zina. This is how the scholars made it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Min absari. Tell the believers to lower some of their gazes. Not all their gazes. And we said that to lower the gaze is to lower the upper lid, uh, the upper lid of your eye, not to close it. Because if you close it, you can't see. So you're looking like this, you look like this. Your vision is not outside to people to the road, in the front of you. Because number one, you can see, no, you need to see. Number two, there are times that you have to look. Look at the Sahabi radiallahu anhu. He went to get married. And then Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa told him, did you look at her? He said, no. Think of this. He's going to get married and he did not look at her. Because looking is haram to him. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told him, no, go back and take a look at her. Because that would be more, uh, yani it would be much better for courtship. So, he permitted looking in khutbah, in khutbah. So, if this is allowed, then we can say, it's allowed for you to look at the woman when you want to marry her. You can imagine how harmful and how haram it is if you look for any other reasons. Because it is an exception here. You can look because you want to get married. You can look because she needs treatment. Scholars allow the doctor to see and not to exceed the limit. If the woman wants to have an operation, the area of the operation, that is the only part that they can look at. They cannot expose any more than what they need. So you have that. And also you have the judge. If a woman wants to testify for something, he has to look at her to make sure that she is the right one or the right person who is testifying for that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not close the doors and He said, do not look. He said, don't uh, let them lower some of their gazes. Meaning that there are some gazes are acceptable in cases uh, that I have mentioned, cases of marriage, in cases of testimony, and in cases of uh, treatment. وَيَحْفَظُ فُرُوجَ Safeguard their privates, totally. Whether they safeguard from committing the indecent act or from just simply exposing it. Like some people when they go out, not dressed properly. They did not do, they did not safeguard their privates. It is not only to not do the act, it is anything that may lead to the act. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى if you lower your gaze, this would be more righteous for you, this would be more pure for you, and this would be more good for you in this dunya and in the hereafter. Some people may say, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want to punish us. It's not like you're enjoying something and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to punish you. Why do sometimes the doctor tell you if you are having blood uh, pressure or diabetes or something like that, why does he deprive you from something you really like? You feel like having some candy, you feel like having something sweet, and then the doctor prohibits you. Your wife tells you no, your mother tells you no. 
a child may cry, you still don't give it to him. Are you trying to punish that person? No. You're loving that person because the result is evil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say. He knows that if you do that, the outcome is very bad for you and for the community. Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended. Inna Allah khabirun bima tasma'un. Allah is very well aware of what you are doing. What do you get from that? Two things. You learn that it is a reminder and it is a warning. I'm warning you, do not look because I see you. And at the same time, I am reminding you as a believer, I see what you're doing. So it can be used as a warning for the person who does it a lot and as a reminder for the person who is a believer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, يَعْلَمُ خَائِنَةَ الْأَعْيُمُ Allah knows the deceiving eye. How did the Sahaba understand that deceiving eye? Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, A woman passes in front of you, you see her, you pretend, you don't look, Whenever you get the opportunity, when she is not looking at you or no one is seeing you, you look. This is Khainat al ayn You're stealing glances. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you, I know that. And I see that even when you are hiding yourself and trying to steal those glances, I see. Let's see what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Sunnah, or Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the command in the Sunnah. Before that, Ibn al-Jawzi rahimahullah said, إِنَّمَا بَصَرُكَ يَا أَخِي نِعْمَةً فَلَا تَعْصِ اللَّهَ بِهِ Ibn al-Jawzi said, O oh brother, your vision is a bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a gift. So don't use it to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with it. This is like giving someone a gift, then he uses it, against you. This is not right. Nobody likes that. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, كُتِبَ عَلَى بْنِ آدَمْ نَصِيبُهُ مِنَ الزِّنَا مُدْرِكٌ ذَلِكَ لَا مَحَالِ It has been ordained that every person is going to get his fair share of committing zina. And everyone is going to fall into that Without exceptions. Imagine. Yaqoon Nabi Sallallahu The two eyes, their zina is to look. So looking is zina. We'll explain that. Wal-udunan zinahum sam Your ears, listening, is their zina. Wal-lisan zinahum kalam your tongue, its zina is conversation. Waliyad zina al The hand, its zina is to harm others or to be used for touching. Warrijlu zina al And your leg, its zina is to walk. Walqalbu yahwi wa yataman. Your heart wishes and hopes. وَيُصَدِّقُ ذَلِكَ الْفَرْجِ أَوْ يُكَذِّبُ And then your privates act upon that or not. So, when we say, or when the Prophet ﷺ said, أَيُّمَ مْرَأَةٍ خَرَجَتْ أَيُّمَ مْرَأَةٍ اسْتَعْطَرَتْ فَخَرَجَتْ فَمَرَّتْ بِقَوْمٍ لِيَشُمُّ رِيحَهَا فَهِيَ زَانِيَ وَكُلُّ عَيْنٍ زَانِيَ Any woman who puts perfume on herself and then she leaves the house, she passes by people so they smell her, she has committed zina and every eye that looks commits zina. So some people will say, brother, I mean, one time we use that for women, you say, you're talking, you, you, you guys are making everything is haram. 
this is zina for just putting some perfume zina, we say yes it is zina, this is what Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu called it. But you have to understand, zina branches. The highest is actual fornication. And then you go below that levels. The eyes, the ears, the hands, the legs, the perfume, all of that, parts of zina. They share the name, but the punishment is not the same. They share the name, but the punishment is not the same. I cannot say a person who looks and a person who commits actual zina are both get the same punishment. Of course not. No one would say that. But the point is, it is a form of zina. This is like having major shirk and minor shirk and things that leads to shirk and so forth. So from this hadith we can understand that not lowering your gaze is committing zina with your eyes. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ma yaqul kan al-fatl عم النبي رضي الله عنه رديفة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم فجاءت امرأة من خف عم فجعل الفضل ينظر إليها وتنظر إليه وجعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصرف وجهه إلى الشق الآخر الفضل the uncle of Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم was riding behind him when a young woman from the tribe of خف عم was approaching the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم she was very beautiful. Al Fadl, his uncle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, started to look at her. And she started to look at him. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed his head and moved it to the other side. The head of Al Fadl. And then she came and she asked Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a question. What do we learn from that? I mean, some people concentrate on that. He was looking at her, and she was looking at him. Focus on, he grabbed his head and twisted it to the other side. It is haram what you are doing. Do not look. Okay? So this is the act. Also, it tells you that it doesn't matter how righteous you are, you can never say, I am not one of them. And the reason I say that, one sister asked me certain questions she teaches at school and she deals a lot with the Imam and the teachers and such. So I was advising her to limit her contact with, with the men. And then she answered, I never seen anything bad from them. Uh, they don't look, they don't, uh, I guess they are satisfied with their marriage and this and that. I said, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the wives of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not to even use their voice in an attractive way and to address the companions from behind doors. And you're coming to tell me that we and the wife of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, are fearing for this more than ourselves? A person is not going to show you everything that when he looks, he's not going to just look and jump. At the same time, you don't know how relationship develops. Yes, I mean, start with real, honest, friendly, or just question answer relationship. You do it more and more and more, you can change in one second. Your intention changes in one second. So you can never say, this person is MashaAllah, he would not think of things like that. But the problem is, it is very hard for women to understand how men operate. Unless they take the warnings of the Prophet Wasallam literally and understand it from there. If Prophet Muhammad وسلم, says, when a woman leaves the house, shaitan is right there on her, beautifying her and making her do everything possible to attract men. That's all he does. He makes her change her walk. He makes her exaggerate her talk. He makes her fix herself. He makes her uh, check her smile, check her language, check everything so she can be attracted. And then he rides on the men. 
look how she is and what she says and what she does and what the... And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu knows us. And the shaitan knows you and me more than anyone else. And that's why he knows what he does. And the look is an arrow from the arrows of the shaitan. And the look is what? Poisoned. If someone shoots you with an arrow, it might kill you and it's a regular arrow. What about when you have a poisoned arrow? Chances of getting killed is stronger. يقول الشاعر كل الحوادث مبدأها النظر ومعظم النار من مستصغر الشعر All indecent acts started from small look and the nar, the fire, usually starts from strike of a match strike of a match makes a big fire one look make a major sin in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala So from this we understand if a person looks and studies the beauty of a woman, this is a form of zina. If the person talks and his conversation aiming for that, a form of zina. And of course if talking is that, we can understand kissing and such is worse. The ear, when you listen attentively to a singer, a female singer, to the way she talks, this is a form of a zina. Of course you don't listen to music anyway, but I'm just assuming that you are. And when you talk about touching, it's a form of a zina. Even if you are saying, welcome sister, and you're shaking her hand, just because you're welcoming. That is a form of zina, handshake. The same thing, Walking, if you're going for a meeting and your intention is something else, this is zina. And to wish if you can sleep is a zina, a form of zina, just simply wishing. And as we said, the heart, I mean the uh, private, can fulfill that or not. Yaqul Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded Ali radiallahu anhu, he said, do not follow the first look with another look. لا تتبع النظرة فإن لك الأولى وليس الثانية. Don't. You know, you're walking and all of a sudden someone is there. You look. Immediately you turn your head. You're not planning to look. But it's a sudden. Don't look again. The first one is free. The second one is on you. Free only if it's out of a sudden. Not free if someone tells you, check this out, and you look, and then you turn your head and you say, Alhamdulillah, I just did one. It doesn't work this way. It has to be sudden from the beginning. A lot of people do that, use it. They say, hey, you get the first look. Jarir ibn Abdullah said that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu was asked about a person sees a woman all of a sudden. What should he do? Qal isrif basarak. He said, turn your head. That's the solution to it, and you will not incur any sin. Qal Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sitting with the companions, and they're talking. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I warn you from sitting, or be aware from sitting in the streets. Maybe we don't do it here, but in our countries back home, this is our coffee shop, just on, on the heap, on the top of, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, trash pile. <laughs> you just sit there, put a couple of rocks and everything where everybody's walking, and sit and drink your hot tea, chit chat, and it's, it's, it's a, I mean, you have nothing there to do. So they sit there and they talk. So Prophet Muhammad was telling them, do not sit in the roads of the people. Now the companions found that hard. Call Ya Rasulullah. Malana bud min majalisina natahadathu fiya. They said, we can't do that. We have to sit and talk with one another. This is where we sit and this is where we meet. So Prophet Sallallahu made it easy. Call. In abaytu illa al-juloos bin turaqat fa'at al-tariqa haqqa. If you refuse and you insist you want to sit, okay, you can do that. 
but get the right of the road. What are the rights of the road? Ghaddul Basar. That's the number one. Don't look. Women are going to be walking back and forth from there. If every person going to walk by, look, look what kind of a person are you. You find people unfortunately doing that back home. They have their small shop. Nobody is visiting. They sit at the door of the shop. Every person that walks by the shop, men or women, they criticize them. They sit with their friend, look at him, look at her. That's how they spend all their day. And they wonder why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not blessing their merchandise or why they have a bad day because they are committing sin left and right. Number one, turn your vision, lower your gaze. Kaful adha, do not harm others. Or if there is harm, remove it. Rabbi salam. Say wa alaykum salam. It's not like you sit in the street. Salam alaykum. Alaykum salam. Salam alaykum. Alaykum salam. Salam alaykum. Alaykum alaykum. I'm going to have to answer everyone. Say salam alaykum. Yes. Well, you don't want to, then get out. Then move. You haven't paid the right of the street, as Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amr bin ma'roof and nehan al mukam in joining good and forbidding evil. Look how the righteous predecessors did when you talk about uh, lowering your gaze. Insha'Allah, we will conclude with that. Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu qal, إِذَا مَرَّتْ بِكَ مْرَأَةْ فَغُضَّ عَيْنَكَ حَتَّى تُجَاوِزِ Anas ibn Malik said, if a woman passes by you, lower your gaze until she passes. Al-Rabi'a bin Khaytham yaqul, كَانَ يَمْشِي مَرَّةْ فَمَرَّ بِهِ نِسْوَةْ فَغَضَّ بَصَرَهْ وَأَطْرَقَ حَتَّى ظَنَّ النِّسْوَ أَنَّهُ أَعْمَى فَتَعَوَّذْنَ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الْعَمَى He was walking, he saw women coming by, he lowered his head so much to the point that women thought he was a blind person and they sought refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from blindness. Actually all he was doing, lowering his gaze, to the max when they came. Hassan ibn Abi Sinan, he left the day of Eid. Isn't that what all women do or say? Hassan ibn Sinan left the day of Eid. When he came back, his wife knows how evil people can be the day of Eid, even though it's a day of appreciation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how many women are not properly dressed and they're thinking that this is Eid, you're free to do anything you want. His wife told him, how many beautiful women did you see? You know, she said that out of jealousy. Look what he said. Wallahi ma nadhartu illa fi ibhani mundu kharajtu min iddiki ila amrajah. He said, well, by Allah, I never looked to anything more than my thumb from the time I left to you until I came back. Like this, walking and focusing on his thumb so he will not look at anyone. Is it because they don't like to look? Some people think, you know, like, oh, these are companions. No, it is because of the real need to look. It is because of how real men they are, but at the same time they are real men when it comes to controlling their desire. See, anyone can break loose like animals, but the real man is the one who controls himself from falling into that. If you don't have desire for women, so what's the point of lowering your gaze? I mean, it would be a piece of cake. That's why Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said about anger. The strong person is not the one who wrestles the other person. The strong person who controls himself when angry, because not everyone can do that. But there are many people who can wrestle others. So when we talk about that, we think about ourselves. How would we sit at home? You sit uh, watching TV, watching internet, people looking. They don't care about who is in the front of them. Is this uh, uh, the reporter, the news uh, anchors? Any of those women are the ones, in most cases, who are talking. And men look and watch and enjoy themselves and thinking this is acceptable. It is not acceptable. There are other means for you to watch the news. 
it is not only women who can give you the news, you can do it from so many other means if this is your purpose. And those people who sit in coffee shops, men and women, were just friends, were just buddies. Drink coffee and enjoy themselves and then go home at 12 or 1 o'clock at night. And now, alhamdulillah, we have our uh, community here everywhere. We have coffee shops like back home. You know, alhamdulillah, no alcohol there. It is just cigarettes and it is, what do you call that, hoka or mohoka or all that junk. And what do you get there? Teenagers, married men with their wives, having fun with their other friends, enjoying the time, enjoying the night. At least, alhamdulillah, there is no alcohol there. Astaghfirullah, we're getting to awful dealings here and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to lower your gaze and look what we are doing. Remember brothers and sisters that when you look, this look is poisoned. It's an arrow that is poisoned and poison arrow will kill you. And don't ever think that that look is going to satisfy you. It's like a thirsty person taking a drink from the sea. You think he'll ever be satisfied? He needs more and more. And if you fall in that disease, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees you and know your vision is going to be questioned and your ears going to be questioned and guess what? They're going to testify against you. This is the danger of that as Prophet Muhammad told us the day of judgment you come and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you and you will say, I refuse to listen to anyone except myself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you got it. Seals his mouth and then his hand will start to speak. His eyes will start to speak. His ears will start to speak about all the sins that he did. Then he will start cursing his body limbs and saying, I was defending you. But guess what? They are not defending him. So brothers and sisters, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand that not lowering your gaze is a disease and this disease can be deadly if it's not treated. Next time inshallah we'll talk about how we can treat this disease in a successful way. Until then, if you